Olivia, welcome back to my channel. So today, I have a video that I know you are going to love and be excited about. I am going to tell you about the time when I had to call 911 while on the job at Disney. This is one of, I think it's a really good story. Um, honestly, I have so much respect for all the, what's called, first responders involved for the leadership. They handled everything so incredibly well. Um, yeah, so this isn't like a, ooh, this happened, like shade or tea story. It's like a, here's my experience and Disney handled it extremely well. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment below your favorite classic Disney treats. Like I'm talking popcorn, churros, Mickey pretzels, <laughs> Mickey bars. Tell me your favorite down in the comments below. So let me start out by saying Disney is very safety conscious. Like I hope you know that. <laughs> I hope that sets the parks diff like apart from potentially other places. No shade on like any other theme parks or anything, but it is something that Disney does take very seriously. It's one of the first things we learn that safety should be the number one priority above anything else. So Disney actually has on property scattered throughout their own set of like first responders. So I'm not gonna say the name even though like, cause I'm just not sure if it's common knowledge on the internet. It probably is because when you're driving into the parks, if you drive by Disney Springs, if you drive like to the boardwalk, back by like the Hollywood Studios entrance, like all that stuff. Um, you can, you see these, the fire stations with the name on it, but just in case, we're just gonna call them Disney first responders. So basically, if from a landline phone on Disney property, you hit 911, the Disney first responders will pick up. So instead of going to Orange County um, or Osceola County, it's people on Disney property. And by having the landline, by having that, they can get into the park so much quicker because they are literally backstage at the parks at all times. So it's a lot quicker than like Orange County having to get an ambulance there. So just so you know, if anything ever happens <laughs> and you get sick or faint or whatever, hopefully nothing bad ever happens when you're at Disney. But if you have a medical emergency, they can get people there very, very quickly. So on this day, I was working photo at the end of the ride Dinosaur in Animal Kingdom. This was a location I worked a lot. So anyway, I'm working merch and let me kind of explain how the setup is in case you've never been there. Go on the ride Dinosaur and basically you exit, you come up the stairs, but you come through like this skinny little area and there's like a wall of rocks and whatever and there's all these like plastic dinosaurs and then you walk out and you can either like go to the left where there's two cash registers or if you go to the right there's this little like cove um, that you couldn't see before but now it's like oh I can go over there and you enter that and that's where you see your photographs from the ride so the ride takes a picture of you at a certain point and you can come like scan it on your magic band there actually I take that back it automatically scans to the magic band but if you wanna see your photo or scan it onto like an annual pass or a ticket or something like that, you go back to the photo side. So come to the skinny area and then you go to the cash register on the left or the right, you can exit. There's like t-shirts hanging up, all that stuff. So the part of photo that I'm working, let me draw a diagram for you. Here's my little diagram, okay? So here's where you like exit off the ride, you enter the skinny little area, you can go to the cash registers up here or you can go into this little cove down here and see your photos. So I was in this position right over here. So I couldn't really, I could see the doors to like exit, like the actual building to go outside. Um, I could see like a cash register person, but I can't really see anything that's happening back over here. So I was over in this cash register position and a group of people come out and a man, like a middle age, not middle age, I don't know what you call it, dad age, 40-ish maybe, man, he comes over to me and says, um, is there first aid nearby? And I was like, oh, it's actually at the front of the park. I can show you on a map if you would like, but it, unfortunately it's not right here. Like, is there anything I can help you with? And he's like, um, yeah, well, I, oh, God, I really need first aid here like right now. And so I'm like, okay, sir, like what seems to be the problem? Because sometimes people are like, oh, I like, I feel really faint. Or um, if they say like, oh my God, my head hurts so bad. I need like ibuprofen or something. Like we do sell ibuprofen and Advil, Tylenol, um, some children's cold medicine, Benadryl, and like Band-Aids. We sell that stuff um, at some of the 
cash registers. So not at that ride, but they could exit and go to the next little gift shop that was like a 30 second walk away and purchase that. Um, so sometimes I you know, would direct people to that. But in this case, he goes, I think my wife broke her rib on the ride. And so I'm like, oh. And so he's like, I gotta go see her real quick. So he like runs back and where they're, he like, they were stopped in like this area over here. So I'm right here. There's walls, I can't see, but they're like back here somewhere, he and his wife. Not to mention, there's like ropes and chains. Like, you know when you're in line for something and there's like ropes and chains, like guiding you on the line. That's kind of what we had over at this photo station too. So it was like kind of difficult for him to like keep coming back and forth to me. So I turn over to the girl working next to me who was also a CP and I go, do I call 911? Do I call like the Disney first responders? And she's like, I don't know, I've never had this situation before. And I was like, well, okay, I'm gonna do that. And so I pick up the phone, the, the guy comes back and he's like, my wife broke her rib, blah, blah, blah. And so I call 911 and immediately, like, oh my gosh, guys, this was seriously the best experience I could ever ask for um, with with having to call 911. So again, I'm gonna call them Disney first responders, but their name is a lot shorter and it might be known everywhere. I just, I don't wanna say it on here. So anyway, he goes, what is your park location? Animal Kingdom. What, where specifically are you in the park? I'm at the gift shop after the dinosaur ride. Hey, how old is the patient? And so I'm asking the, the man, I'm like, how old is your wife? And he's like, oh, 38. I'm like, okay, 38, you know, female, male, female. Um, whatever, like, what happened, what do you need? I was like, I need an ambulance. This man think that his wife broke a rib on the ride. So they're like, okay, so they're like, is she breathing, is she is she sitting, is she standing, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like asking this guy like all these questions, like, has she felt this pain before? As he's like running up to me and I'm running like back out of the cove to go see his wife. And I'm just like trying to ask stuff. So eventually he's like, just goes, he goes back to his wife. And they're still asking me questions about this patient who I can't even see. I don't even know what the woman looks like. So they start like asking me more stuff and I was like, I don't know, the patient is out of my sight and the man, you know, and her husband ran back to be with her. I like, I'm on a landline, I can't move. And they're like, okay, well, do not move her. There's help on the way. They will be there very, very soon. Um, and yeah, they basically just gave me like a lot of instructions at once, but it was like good instructions. It was like, okay, make sure she does not move. Make sure she does not like stand or sit or lay down, like whatever position she's in, like leave her there. We don't want to dislodge anything. We don't want to, etc. So at this point, I think there was enough of like, I don't think she was screaming, but she was definitely like holding her like ribs and like whatever in the middle of the shop. So there was enough for, um, oh my God, attractions captains, merch captains, merch leaders, a crowd of people now watching. Um, somehow like security was there. And so I walk over and, and I see my leader and oh my goodness, bless this leader. Okay, so I don't know like what all the words exactly are for it, but sometimes we have leaders. I think, I don't know if he was being trained to be a leader or it's like he was a leader at his last location, but here he's a captain. And so now he's starting to take shifts every now and then like as a leader, but he's not considered like a permanent leader. Anyway, it was one of his first shifts as a leader, like at our location. And I'm like, oh my God, 911 gets called. So I'm talking like to him and the woman. And I was like, just so you know, the paramedics are on the way. I just got off the phone with them. They say, just stand still, whatever. And so I'm like repeating the instructions and this woman starts like yelling and like screeching. And it's like, stop freaking out my kids. You guys are all freaking out my kids. I don't want my kids to be scared. You're all freaking out my kids. And so the dad like grabs the kids hands and like runs outside basically and has them. And um, yeah, anyway, so I go back to my location like my spot behind the cash register, sorry, that screeching like <clears throat> So I go back over there, my leader was like, yes, I know you called them, that's why I'm here now. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Cause I, I don't know if everyone gets like notifications or if he just happened to be like walking in to check on us like at the exact time I had just got off the phone with 911. So anyway, like the paramedics come, they come with a stretcher. Again, there's like police, there are security guards, there's attractions cast members, there's merchandise cast members, and then there's also guests trying to exit the skinny little gift shop at the end of Dax, one, like one of Dax's most popular rides. Um, one of my friends, Trista, actually is an attractions cast 
was on the same program as me, was an attractions cast member on that ride, but this day, of course, she was not at work, so I have no clue what the attraction side to the situation was. I wish I did, but I didn't have any other contacts at the time to like ask about that. So then, like, the husband comes over and he wants to see the picture from um, the ride that they were on, because, okay, here's the thing. On Dinosaur, they were thinking like some bar or something like hit her rib and like smashed it. Our personal, as in me and my coworker, not Disney's, me and my coworker's personal thoughts was that it maybe her appendix burst because there is literally nothing to hit on that ride. Like you wouldn't, the bar is so far in front of you, there's literally no way she hit her rib on it. Like she was seat belted in, there was literally nothing, no part of the ride that could have caused something to snap in her rib to break. Like that was literally not possible on this ride. So maybe she like twisted a weird way or maybe her something happened to her appendix. So anyway, we like try to find the photo, we pull it up. He like scans it onto his magic band because, okay. So the magic band, it will go automatically on there, but it can take up to 24 hours. It could be 20 minutes, but it can take up 24 hours. So just in case we're like, we wanna make sure he like definitely, definitely has this and can get it as soon as possible. So we like directly put it onto the magic band. And so, um, so we got that form and his wife was like holding her side and seemed to be in pain, but it, again, it was nothing from the ride itself. So then a little bit later, our leader comes over and asks to see the same picture again. So we get the picture, we like blow it up like really big and print it out. The police come over, we print it up really big and print it out. This is all happening. Now this is over the course of like 45 minutes, like an hour and a half. Um, it was very intense. So eventually like the paramedics come and go, but like, I don't even know where the woman's at because then one of my other coworkers is like, am I supposed to take this wheelchair to her? I'm like, what? And apparently she was like standing outside. So I don't really know how it got resolved, but um, yeah, that's the, that's the time I called 911. But like, honestly, yeah, they were like so fast in getting there. Like the leaders were so fast in getting there. Um, I did have to take a couple seconds and go to the back and like breathe for a second because that's really scary calling 911 and dealing with like screaming parents and like people that are potentially really injured. Um, and that's where I learned. I never really want to be in an emergency situation where someone's life is like in my hands or like I have any control over that whatsoever. Not that her life was in my hands, but like I could never be a doctor or a paramedic or anything like that because I cannot handle that stress. I cry under that kind of pressure. And unfortunately I don't have the attraction side to it because I texted my friend during break and was like, hey, just had to call 911. Like, are you here today? And she's like, no, of course that happened on my day off. So. I don't know the attraction side to it, but Disney was really, really great about that. Um, so just know, if you ever, ever have an emergency situation, go to call 911 on a landline, and then the Disney first responders are like excellent about getting there and getting there fast. I will say the husband was extremely ticked off, very angry, yeah. He was very, very angry about the entire situation, which like I can see if you think a ride like hurt your wife, like that's reason to be angry. But the only other time I dealt with an emergency situation was when I had, <laughs> I had a parent come up to me again, a male, and he's like very calm at first. He's like, hey, so like, is there a place children and parents can go if like they get separated from each other or lost? And I was like, sir, are you separated or <laughs> lost from your child? He's like, yeah, I, I can't find my son. And so I'm like, okay, um, let me call security right now and like get them on that. Let, let's get people over here who can actually help you with this. He's like, okay, great, thank you. So I like walk over, I like call on the landline, call my captain, I'm like, hey, we have a signal, whatever code it was for lost child, like I don't even remember. Um, I was like, hey, we have a lost a parent who like lost his child, like can you come up here? Can you like call security, whatever? And she's like, yeah, I'll be right there. So I hang up, so I go over to the, the man. At this point, like, the wife is like with him and she's very like, <sighs> literally that's what she looked like. And I was like, hi sir, so I just called my captain and security, they're on their way over here right now and like, we're gonna, we're gonna find your kid, they're gonna get the details um, from you so they can get a good description, et cetera. And so uh, he's like, okay, okay, and he's just kind of like, whatever, like nervous. And I was like, so, um, and like, I don't know if this was right of me to do, but I was like, I was like, so were you like in the gift shop? Like when this happened? Cause I just wanted to make sure the kid wasn't like still in there, like hiding behind something. And he's like, 
yeah, well, we went and looked at the pictures, and then I guess he didn't come with us when we came back, like, he was gone. And I was like, okay, well, like, security will be here, like, any second, sir. Um, like, we'll make sure to find your child, whatever. And so then the wife, like, the wife's there, and he's like, okay, she just called, like, her supervisor, they're gonna be over. And she's like, that's not good enough! My child is missing, and that's all you can do? <coughs> so anyway, I can't do that voice anymore, but she's, like, screeching again, like, hot tears you can tell she's like scared and just projecting her anger onto me even though i didn't do anything she's the one who lost her child at disney world and she's like that's not good enough you're gonna be doing more whatever and i'm like ma'am security is on their way they're going to find your son etc etc okay let me put this into perspective so my captain comes i think and go on break or something i cried in the back for a couple minutes but um the kid again we were at the dinosaur ride i'll put a map of disney world on the screen he was in asia he was found all the way in Asia. This kid goes walking for like 20 minutes by himself. Like I have done that walk before. It's like a 20 minute walk, okay? So I don't know what that kid was doing. So there are two emergency situations that I dealt with at Disney um, as a cast member there. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. Um, the kid was found again, like security got on it. They found him pretty quickly. Um, again, I think I went on break by the time I was back. The situation was resolved so yeah disney's pretty good about safety in my opinion anyway it's intense though seeing people like screech and cry and like be scared and need medical attention all of that so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up have a wonderful day keep doing it loud and i'll see you guys next time bye